And finally, we're going to be moving on to our final and last topic here today. And that is our universe. We're going to be explaining dark matter. Whew. Yeah, yes, yes. You may have heard the term dark matter before, and you may think to yourself that you truly don't even know what it is. You know, like you're, you have no idea where to begin, <laughs> and you're not alone. You won't be alone in thinking that way. Although dark matter makes up an estimated 85% of the total mass of our universe, it's been and has remained to be a mystery to modern physicists, you know, and us, of course, for over 80 years now. So let's just talk about it a little bit. It outweighs ordinary matter, which consists of all the atoms that make up the stars, the galaxies, our clouds, and the cosmos, by a factor of four to one. So that's quite a bit. It's become apparent that it exists solely because of its powerful gravi gravity. And with galaxies relying on it to encase them as they spin incredibly fast, keeping them together. So we can't actually see it, we can't make sense of it, but it's like everything else around it kind of leads us to believe that it exists. It's been decades, almost a century, and still nobody understands it or its origins. So here's what we kind of sort of do know and understand about um, dark matter. Scientists, they theorize that it was produced in massive quantities in the immediate aftermath of the Big Bang. So they believe it's been here since the very beginning, like right after that happened. According to two physicists, uh, Lasha Bertini and Justin Corey with the University of Pennsylvania, dark matter has been changing forms this whole time, beginning from particles in the universe's biggest structures and shifting to a superfluid state at smaller levels. You can read more about that in their essay, Theory of Dark Matter, Superfluidity. We can't detect, I'm sorry, we can detect dark matter. We only, we're only able to see the way it affects everything around us, like I mentioned with the gravitational pull and all of that. We just see that it, everything is pulling and everything is, things are going in a certain direction, but we can't really make sense of what it is that that something is. The way galaxies rotate and light bends as it travels through the universe. University of Pennsylvania physicists, um, they're now at the university, um, or I'm sorry, Princeton University, they suggest that the reason that we've had a hard time understanding what dark matter is, is because it just doesn't say the same. It's quite possible that dark matter is something that's ever changing. It's shape shifting. And that's why it's hard for us to pinpoint what it is, where it come from, where it came from, and I guess what it does. So what how do we make sense of this? How do we work all that out? The traditional view of dark matter is that it's made up weekly of weekly interacting particles, such as axons, which are influenced by the force of the gravity in ways that we can observe at larger scales. So this cold form of dark matter can be used to predict how massive clusters of galaxies will behave. And it fits into what we know about the cosmic web of the universe and how everything is interconnected. Scientists suggest that all galaxies are connected within a vast intergalactic web made up of invisible filaments of dark matter. So it's the dark matter that's connecting all of these galaxies. And that's connecting everything within the galaxies to each other. That's our understanding. But when we scale down to individual galaxies and the way their stars rotate in relation to the galactic center, Something just doesn't add up. It's just not going the way that we predict it to go. We've got the cold dark matter particles from the massive galaxy cl clusters, right? But on a singular gal gal galactical scale, they suggest that dark matter takes on a super fluid state. That goes back to that ever-changing, shape-shifting understanding. Superfluids are a form of cold, densely packed matter that has zero friction and viscosity. The shifting states are thought to work like this. The halos of dark matter encasing individual galaxies form the conditions needed to produce a superfluid, <clears throat> which serves as a gravitational pull on the, gra on the galaxy to keep it densely packed. The coldness of space ensures the temperature remains low. And on a larger scale, the gravitational pull is too weak 
to form a superfluid. So what does this mean for our understanding, right? What does this mean? The hope is that such knowledge of dark matter's shifting state could help physicists to better understand the elusive behaviors of individual galaxies by itself under and that you know that it can't uncover by itself the gravity it just can't be done by itself while the hip- hypothesis is yet to be peer reviewed we're still going and other scientists are reviewing it other physicists are reviewing it and we're still trying to make sense of this superfluid dark matter um, and this ever changing shape shifting type of you know filament that still holds everything together but it's not just one thing that we can put our finger on. So we're still trying to make sense of that. But it's so intriguing to think that the mystery of dark matter could soon be uncovered. We're still, we're getting closer. With each little thing, we're getting closer. This is actually the first time that I've heard about dark matter being something that is shape-shifting and that it's super fluid and that it's moving in many different ways. I've always had the understanding, of course, that it is the majority of our galaxy. What was it? The 80, estimated 85% in total. But exactly what is it, right? It, what does it look like? Is it tangible? Is it, an, it, it's, it is invisible to our eye. Um, but honestly, it, does that still, is that enough? Is that enough for our understanding? Yes, the world is made up 85% of this invisible thing. We still want to make sense of it. We want to actually know what it is. And I love that we're getting a little closer with each passing day. So please, look into that, uh, the theory on the dark matter superfluidity. Look into what other physicists are saying and tell me what you think about, you know, our dark matter and about our galaxy and gravity and are all these things interconnected like we perceive them to be. <clears throat> We've gotten this from a new, explanation, a new explanation for dark matter, could be the best one yet, from collective evolution as well as that theory of dark matter superfluidity. Thank you so much today for joining us. I am Vanessa. You're watching Believe. And you can always check us out um, more on youtube.com forward slash believe loves you as well as believe.love. Bye-bye.